When in 1996, race car driver Mark Blundell got into his Indy car in Rio, he was about to put four decades of crash dummy research and tweaks to the severest of tests. Coming down the back straight, I think we were touching 202 miles an hour. Hit the brake pedal. And one of the racing driver's worst fears is no brakes. I basically took a decision that what I needed to do was to hit the car in front of me before I hit the concrete wall. Because I knew at that speed, hitting concrete, the chances of me surviving were slim. I wanted to hit him to take away the, uh, the impact and, and dissipate some of the energy. And probably luckily for him, I did miss him. That looks like uh, Mark Blundell. I hit at 198 miles an hour. We had 122 G impact. The car does everything it's designed to do. The engine breaks away from the monocoque. The front of the monocoque was damaged, but that sort of broke my impact. That disintegration is good. That's energy leaving the car. My seat belts were five inches longer than what they were manufactured. So that tells you that my body went forward in such a way they stretch five inches. The monocoque of that race car was two inches narrower than what it was manufactured. Mark Blundell climbed out of the car under his own power, but seemed to collapse by the edge of the track. Four fractures in my right foot. My knees were like basketballs. My internal organs had moved, so the cartilage muscle was stripped off the sternum, and my lungs and ribs had collided. I'd hit my head against the steering wheel and also against the side of the wall, and I had a, a hematoma, so I had a blood clot in the brain. Lucky boy. Mark's car exceeded its design criteria, safely cocooning him in a survival cell. But as Mark's injuries demonstrate, just preventing the driver from being crushed isn't the end of the problem. Yeah.